Praise the Almighty God. Praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. The God whom we serve on this mountain, the only true God, the I am that I am, the one who was, who is, and who shall forever be, the one who honors his word, the one who will never come late, the one who is called the dryer of tears, the one whom we serve on this mountain, the God of Elijah, shall visit you by fire in the name of Jesus. He shall cause a positive change in your history in the name of Jesus. You shall sing your song and dance your dance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Very quickly, we are going into um, this topic we have before us, which is rewriting your family history rewriting your family history what is history why do we have to rewrite rewriting your family history history is the past history is the yesterday of your today history is the chronicle of your yesterday History has a behavior, whether we like it or not. It repeats itself at any opportunity. History, whether good or bad, flows down like a river. According to what, was this, uh, what is described to us in uh, the book of Job, chapter 22, verse 15 to 16, it says, Has Thou marked the old way which wicked men have trodden, which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with a flood. It flows down. It can overflow from one generation to another. History is a stubborn architect that designs its own foundation history is like an essay it can be rewritten or left to be history is like a castle built for many years to come you can live in it and pass it on to your next generation you may decide to live with its problems because it will always come with its problem anyway and you may decide to move out the choice is yours. Everyone born into the world have a history in connection with the family they belong. When a family is noted for something bad, then there is an ancient platform upon which everyone in that family would continue to build on that same foundation, on that same platform, they continue to build. They never learn from each other's mistakes. They never learn from errors. They repeat errors. Because there is a platform they have to continue to build on. Unless something is done to cause a change. Psalm 11 verse 3 says, If the foundation be destroyed, what? can the righteous do many things the righteous can do many things he can reconstruct he can redesign he can even decide to rewrite amen anyone in a family or in a locality can be the one to rewrite a family history that will cause a positive change in a whole nation. From this, we go to our text for this lecture. That's in Judges chapter 6. I'll just take a few verses from there, which is um, 14 to 16. Judges 6, 
Amen. From 14, here is a nation, Israel. They chose to disobey God. They knew the law. They were given the law, but they decided to go the wrong way. So God handed them over to their enemies, the media. And then they were left for a long time without experiencing miracles, divine intervention, anything. They were just left there. So from that 14, and the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Now there we can see a message, a commission given to somebody in person of Gideon. We won't take the whole of that story because of our time. But he made a complaint before that. We were left alone. No divine intervention. No help. We heard how God led the Israelites uh, through the uh, parted Red Sea. We heard how they were fed with manna. But where is the God now? Who is going to save us? Where, when will our deliverance come? He had complained. But the Great Commission came. And then it was go in that strength so in verse 15 and he said unto him oh my lord wherewith shall i save israel <laughs> behold history listen to his family history behold my family is poor in manasseh and i am the least in my father's house history the least in his father's house. You see, you can rewrite your family history. No matter who you are. No matter where you're coming from. You see, after that great commission, Gideon, who said his family was the least and the poorest, he went on to do exploits for God. He built an altar for God. That was the first assignment. And then he went on to cut down the groves that that has never happened in that family before. He went on to cut down the groves. He cast down the altars of Bear. To the extent that he was, his life was threatened. So you can see the terribleness of the spiritual state of that nation. The Bible says, stone all idolaters. But they are planning to stone somebody who is trying to stop idolatry. So you can see the terrible state of their lives. But Gideon went in the strength of that word. He did exploit. The poorest, the least, the smallest. But God saw in him a leader, a deliverer. And so he caused a change. Gideon saw his limitations. But God saw his his real self within him. So no matter who you are, you can rewrite your family history. You don't have to be the firstborn in your family to be the most outstanding. There in the Bible, Joseph was the 11th of 12 children of his father. But he became the most outstanding. And then you also can be named among the great and the first family history. Family history that you must rewrite. I will give you a breakdown of that. If in your family there is this um, flow of history of failure. There is a record of the history of failure in that family. Somebody must stand out to make sure that is dealt with. It must be rewritten. In some families, they experience the history of um, the tail region. No matter what you do to lift them, no matter what you do to get them repositioned, they still find themselves back in that tail region. There is a history of programmed evil. They are always coinciding with evil. 
the history of constant embarrassment in a family. There is a history of suicide. There is a history of bitterness. There is a history of recycled tragedy. There is a history of wastage. There is a history of marital failure. There in that family, the husband is a wife bitter. Women in that family, they bite men. And then, after everything, it will end up in failure. There is a history of moral bankruptcy. There is a history of poverty. There is a history of polygamy. There is a history of slavery. There is a history of disgrace. There is a history of falling from great heights. After laboring and laboring and laboring and achieving, 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 they get to that height and all of a sudden, walk down. There is a history of childlessness. All kinds of terrible diseases, infirmities, shortcomings here and there surrounding this. There is a history of vagrancy. There is a history of failure at the edge of breakthroughs. There is a history of shame. There is a history of becoming history while alive. These are things that we must address. It's a kind of family history that we must rewrite and create a clean platform for our next generation. How then do we make positive history in our family? Number one, you must discover who you are. It's very easy to ask somebody, oh, who, who are you? What's your name? Oh, I'm, da -da 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 -da. I'm this, I'm that. They only know themselves by the name they bear. Nothing more. You must know who you are. Why you are who you are. Zacchaeus discovered himself. He knew the limitations he had. You must discover the things that are limiting your family. By that, you start to work out salvation and deliverance for your family. You must decide to change. That's a very, very difficult thing for many people to do. But it has to be done if we will want uh, progress to come in. You must press. Don't give up. Don't sit down and do nothing so that heavens can move on your behalf. If you sit down, heavens will sit down. You must maintain good relationships. The kind of friends you have in life may be pillars or caterpillars. You must seek God and find God. All those men and women who made impact in the scriptures were men and women who had the divine unforgettable encounter with God. You need to be current with God for your life to be correct. There is no way you can make it in life by being disconnected from God. You must have a teachable spirit. A teachable spirit willing to learn. Life itself, as we can see, is a school. Be ready to learn. From young and old, from any situation, from any circumstance, you find yourself be ready to learn. No man is an island of knowledge. Be ready to learn. God cannot reach you unless he can teach you. According to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Now, how do we rewrite history? Things of the spirit, when you talk about it, not many people understand. Rewriting a, um, um, history does not mean that somebody should go and climb Mount Everest and say because um, every member of the family never reached any you know, height in life and then I want to go to the top and top and top, the person will crash land without being a professional, it will crash land and there will be another history entirely. Amen. So you must become a barrier breaker. That is number one. Number one point of how to rewrite history. Being a barrier breaker. 
all the popular men in scriptures were men who broke barriers where there is no way they try to find a way you must be ready to face oppositions that is number two and we must bear in mind that no one has ever succeeded without having to face oppositions unless you don't have a glorious destiny if you have one the more glorious your destiny is then the harder the opposition you will face according to philippians 3. point number three when you face attacks don't give up don't give up jerusalem as a city faced so many attacks all because of its prophetic agenda number four determined to depart from your present level to higher heights according to psalm 113 verse 7. you must make christ your target and role model jesus meek and gentle but without weakness jesus firm without harshness he was strong but with, with without intolerance he had no fault he had no blemish number six we must be disciplined discipline is a hard word to understand now in our world today you must decide not to please yourself amen number seven always remember that the way to the top is rough it's just like climbing a mountain it's very rough up there number eight you must become a prayer addict the bible says pray without season that songwriter says what a privilege to carry everything everything to god in prayer you must pray as jesus prayed according to luke 6 verse 12. and number nine you must be pure and holy you cannot fully come to the place of outstanding achievement in god when there is one point of controversy between you and god number 10 you must eat the word of god the way the same way you eat food until it becomes part and parcel of you knowing the word of god confessing the word of god living by the word of god living in the word of god is being a citizen of heaven there is no other language the bible language the bible word is the heavenly language you cannot serve god whom you you cannot speak his language you cannot claim to love a god you do not understand his language amen to rewrite history 10 points to consider we are going into our prayers tonight and the prayers we're going to pray are the kind of prayer that will hit its target they are prayers to pray to rewrite your history if there are thieves in your family you can put a stop to it today if there are cheats in your family you can put a stop to it today failure is the order of the day there you can put a stop to it today liars you can put a stop to it today glutons you can put a stop to it tonight with fire and power in our voice we are going to pray i want us to rise up as if we have just arrived here i want you to gather enough strength that you can carry now and for the next few seconds we are going to pray and you will start to experience changes positive changes amen with our eyes closed with our mouth opened wide and with fire and thunder in our voice we shout out this prayer where is the lord god of elijah oh! Open your mouth and shout that out loud. Oh, yes.
Where does the Lord God of Elijah appear, appear, appear? Appear in my situation. Appear in my family. Appear in the issues of my life. Appear, appear. There must be a change. There must be a change. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. My life. My life. Hear the word of the Lord. Arise. 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 And shine. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are in this meeting tonight, uh, going through a very rough time in your business, or you are here, something is telling you that you are supposed to be mightily blessed financially, but one way or the other, the enemy has stolen from you. Or you are here, find that the enemy is blocking your way of joy. You pray this one prayer with fire and with power. And then as I begin to, as I begin to pray, let your amen be dynamic. The prayer I want you to pray is this. Please pray it from the top of your voice and from the depth of your heart. Say this after me loud and clear. You will cry out your name, your name, whatever your name is. Daniel Olukoya! You will not surrender. Your enemies shall surrender. Can you shout it loud and clear? In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare it. In Jesus name we pray if you are in the category of people that are mentioned just stretch your right hand towards the altar the situation I described if you are seeking for financial breakthrough or you want the miracle of debt cancellation stretch your right hand towards Hosea then first of all quietly make a vow before the Lord a vow before him of what you will do when the blessings overshadow your life the angel of blessing is here and is going from person to person father in the name of jesus i decree by the decree of heavens that your red sea 
must bow. Your Jordan must divide. You will sing your song and dance your dance. Every enemy of your full scale laughter, I command them to be arrested. Let them be arrested. Let them be arrested. Let them be arrested. Let them be arrested. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us share the grace in fellowship. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us.